Truck presents The Winston, an all-star showdown with NASCAR's best and ABC Sports Exclusive. Brought to you by the heartbeat of America, today's Chevy Trucks. By AC Delco, stay ahead of trouble with AC Delco parts. And by Budweiser, Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. The Charlotte Motor Speedway in North Carolina, a showplace for NASCAR racing, a mile and a half track where the spectator never loses visual contact with the racing field. A resurfaced oval, very fast, four qualifiers yesterday breaking the old track record. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson. And yes, we have a dandy today. We've got 20 of NASCAR's best, $600,000 in prize money to sprinkle around with $200,000 going to the winner. And I guess the only factor missing would be a couple of revenues, and they're not so competitive these days anyhow. The format, however, is a little bit different. You have 20 cars and drivers entered in this, but you had to win to get the invitation to come here. And this is how the race will be run. And pay particular attention right now to these graphics, if you will, because they'll help you understand early on what's going to happen today. There are three segments, 75 laps, 50 laps, and the final 10 laps. Total miles, 202 and a half. Starting order for that first segment of 75 laps determined by qualifying speed. Segment two now, the starting position will be determined by the number of times a driver assumes the lead. That's a key word, assumes the lead. The winner of the segment might not be the pole sitter in either segment two or three. Now as for money, it's 600,000 bucks. That's a lot of them. The big payoff comes in the final 10 lap segment, $200,000 but those 10 laps all have to be run under the green flag. Yellows will not count. But nonetheless, that's enough money, I think, to uh, certainly be an inspiration <laughs> to somebody. But the rules in this circumstance are so different that I've got to turn to my colleague Donnie Allison and talk to him about it. Donnie Allison, in case some of you may not remember, in 1970 won the World 600 here at Charlotte and placed fourth at Indy in the 500 all in the same weekend. So he's an old bulldog and he'll understand what I'm about to ask him. Can you really ask a race car driver to give up the lead? Well, Keith, in my 27 years, never one time do I remember giving up the lead willingly. You know, I had to give it up for a reason or another, and uh, I don't think you can ask any of these guys to do that. Uh, I don't know what they're going to do or how they're going to go about uh, assuming the lead, but I don't think you can ask them to give it up. It would seem to me that a slower fellow, maybe somebody back in the pack, might be the one to profit from the assumption of the lead, but the guys who have the solid equipment, uh, they might be interested in going wire to wire or just might not care a whit about it. Well, I think what they'll do is run to the pit stop anyway and then let let the pit stop take care of itself. When they come in the pits, they'll lose the lead naturally and then assume it back. All right, now you've got a mandatory pit stop in the first segment. You've got to come in under the green flag and take two tires. Now you can come in all you want under yellow, but still you've got to take a stop under the green and it's gonna be terribly interesting to figure out when they take that stop. Well, that's gonna be the key thing, Keith. Uh, whether some guys might try to do it a little early or, or wait till the last pop possible minute. All right, the men who are going to be running the race, they have an idea about this format and about what might happen today. We sampled some of their opinion. Here's what they had to say. I don't see anything wrong with it, really. Uh, it's, it's a unique type of racing, and uh, let's give it a shot before we, we, before we shoot it down. Let's see what happens. It may be good. I, I have been a witness to the Winston races that we've had. They stunk. You know, they were awful. It was like watching paint dry. It was, they were terrible. They had to do something to make our premier event a little more exciting. Well, I don't like the format. Uh, I think it's uh, somewhat contrary to our kind of racing, although once in a while we do have a 10-lap trophy dash at the end of a 500-mile race. Well, I've never run a, a race like this, but I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be, uh, for the fans, the best three parts of any race that they ever wanted to see. So when you start monkeying around with a format and really not asking the competitors or very many people how they felt about it or if they had a better idea, I think it's 
possibly the beginning of the end of the event. No, I think it, this is a type of race and a type of event that is, is for show more than anything else. And, uh, you know, if they want us to run backwards, that's fine too. We uh, are interested in what the drivers think, and I think some of them like it, some of them don't like it. But this race was is for the fans, and it's designed specifically for the fans, and I think they're going to love it with this unique format. They're going to see some real racing. That's why racing fans enjoy this sport. We're bringing them an event that I think they will truly enjoy today. Down where the heavy work is done, in the garage and along pit road, our colleague Dr. Jerry Punch with his perspective. Well, Keith, baseball and basketball both have their own all-star games, and golf, you got the Masters. Well, race, racing, stock car racing never had anything to compare to that until you enter this event, the Winston. It's third consecutive year with its third different format. And it's a way of searching. They're searching for a format to showcase the best stock car drivers in the world. And some of the drivers are comparing it to a boxing match. Three rounds, three different sets of competition with two intervals. You can go to your corner for 10 minutes, collect your thoughts, get your wits together, and put that strategy together to come out loaded for bear. Well, the defending champion of this event is a veritable welterweight with a heavyweight punch. And the fellow I'm standing with is Bill Elliott. And Bill, normally when you race, the premium is for how many laps you can lead. But here it's how many times you lead. Does that mean your brake pedal could be as important today as your gas pedal? Well, I don't think anybody's going to wait on anybody else to slow down and swap a lead. I think it's going to be a good race. There's a lot of good automobiles out here, and everybody's going to be shooting to try to lead as many times as they can. Any unknowns for you? I know it's a new race car and a brand new track surface and a brand new format, but uh, are you concerned about the way the track may be now following that qualifying race just concluded? Yeah, a little bit. I watch that race uh, very closely to see what the other cars did, and you know we'll just have to wait and see how this race starts and kind of go from there and see how the other competition is. Well, Bill Elliott has to be the odds-on favorite today, and a lot of people say he may be the man to beat with a new track qualifying record. But the sentimental favorite is the man you're looking at right now, Tim Richmond. He won the biggest battle of his career five months ago, and that was the battle for life. After winning at Riverside, he was at a hospital a month later up in Ohio in critical condition, trying to survive. It'll be his first time back in a race car. And Tim, I gotta ask you, do you think you maybe have something to prove not only to yourself, but to the fans today? I've always got something to prove, uh, at least to myself, uh, not really to anybody else. I just, uh, uh, losing's not something I like to deal with very well. And, uh, and I, so I, I'm here to prove I can win again to myself. Uh, and I want to say thanks to everybody that sent cards and letters. Uh, there was a tough time there for a while, and they sure made it better for me. You said you're not 100%, but can you go the 135 laps wide open today? I believe I can. You know, if I didn't think I could, I, I really wouldn't be getting in the car because the last thing I would do would be to jeopardize my health. And uh, so I think I can. Uh, we're, we're about to find out, though. Indeed, we're about to find out. Here's a man who may have more courage than he has strength and stamina, but he's still trying to pick up his first ever win here in the Winston. Keith? All right, Jerry, thank you very much. And there is one thing about this particular sport. If you don't have courage, you shouldn't be in it. The bottom line thought for this Winston and the way it's being run to determine the fastest, smartest, and most aggressive driver in Winston Cup history. Well, the weather conditions are pretty good today. It's a little warm at 82 degrees. It's going to get very warm for them down on the racetrack. Obviously, that's true. But as for aggressiveness, as for technology, as for just plain old-fashioned country grit, nobody exemplifies it more than Dale Earnhardt and Jerry Punch is with him. Well, the man who's had the hottest hand this year on the tour with six wins in the first nine starts, Dale Earnhardt. How do you see today's Winston? I know it's going to be a charging race, but can you be aggressive all afternoon? I think so, uh, Jerry. Uh, I think the guys that's going to be up front racing for the lead is going to be there all day long. And, uh, you know, I'm looking for Davey to be strong, but Bill's going to be awful strong, too. So it's going to be a competitive race uh, from what I can see in practice yesterday. And uh, the way the racetrack stayed, it stayed pretty consistent during that Winston Open. So it's going to be a good, fast race. Well, indeed it will be. Earnhardt gives warning he may be a force to contend with here today. Keith? Well, the way he's been running in practice, he seems to run through the corners, not going in, not coming out necessarily, but through the middle of the turns. Donnie Allison, he seems to really get after him. Well, yes, Keith, he's really got his car working in the middle of the corner. Now we're standing by for the starting grid to move off the starting line, and here's the command now from Bill Cuddell to start the engine. Gentlemen, start your engine! As you sit waiting on a starting grid, it's important to control your emotions. You save your adrenaline best you can, but 
Every driver in the world knows it, and every driver in the world fails at it, because if your heart isn't pumping a little bit right now, sitting down in one of those race cars, in this unusual format, with all the gold waiting at the end of the day, well, I'm not sure you're alive, because you've got to be excited about the opportunity at hand for this one. So they're about to begin their roll. They'll go around twice, and then the green flag will drop. There's been a 100 lap or 150 miler run already today. They had only one engine failure, so the track has very little oil on it. That is down in the turn three area, but there's been a lot of rubber laid down. Now the question of a lot of rubber on the track, it's a brand new surface, and the heat factor, it could conceivably make it a bit slick. We'll see as the day wears on, but on the field now, waiting to go out and warm it up for two laps, the best in NASCAR racing today. So now they move out behind the pace car. Two laps from now, we'll be racing. So let's take a look at the starting grid. On the pole with a new track record, 170.8, Bill Elliott, a T-Bird, steady and fast, this fellow. Outside, Tim Richmond coming back from a battle with pneumonia, an absolute charger. Row number two inside, young Davey Allison, daring two in a Ford 169 plus, Dale Earnhardt in a Chevy 169, he's at the peak of his game. Row number three, Jeff Bodine is inside. You have two different generations here. Benny Parsons, an old timer and a tough one, outside in an old. Row number four, it's young Rusty Wallace in a Pontiac, and Neil Bonnet in a Pontiac will be on the outside. He's another tough charger. Row number five, Darrell Waldrip. You watch him work his way out of the pack. Bobby Hillen Jr. outside row five. He only lacks experience. Row number six, it's Greg Sachs. And outside will be Terry Labonte. Labonte may have the strongest engine in the field. Row number seven, veteran Harry Gant. And outside, Bobby Allison. You talk about a pair of old pros. You got them there. Row number eight, it's father and son. Kyle Petty and Richard Petty. When you say Petty, you're talking stock car racing, no question. Row number nine, Morgan Shepard inside. A pair of young ones here with Ricky Rudd outside. And inside row 10, Cale Yarborough carrying our race camera. Outside in row 10, number 88, Buddy Baker. He won the Winston Open earlier today. There's his car, and that put him in this field, and it's a field Buddy Baker should be in because he's one of the great names from his generation of racing. The last time he won a race at Charlotte was 1973. Earlier today, over 150 miles, he came away with 30,000 bucks. All right, Donnie Allison, his car's already gone at a good pace, 150 miles. Is this an advantage or disadvantage? Well, I think, Keith, uh, right now it's definitely an advantage. He has ran a race on this racetrack and knows what the tires are gonna do, knows what the car's gonna do. If anybody has an advantage, it has to be Buddy Baker right now. Buddy's back in the pack. Well, I, I, I think just like the driver said, that's really immaterial. You're gonna run the car as hard as you can anyway and try to get to the front. And uh, he showed that in the uh, previous race. Yeah, he did. He had a heck of a duel, and he held off leg speed. All right, let's go inside Cale Yarborough's car, the veteran from Timmonsville, South Carolina. There's a race camera in there. Now, you can literally see Cale's eyes. I guess he's put glasses on now, but you'll also be able to see his feet and how he's handling his car. And you know this is a guy that does not like to run at the back of the pack. I mean, he's going to be crowding some tailpipes before this day is over if that automobile is <laughs> will hang together for him. Because Gail Yarborough doesn't understand running at the back of the back unless he's helpless to change it. Let's see if the pace car comes down off. It's off the racetrack. The green flag is up, and here comes 20 of the best in NASCAR stock car racing, the Winston. What's the first corner? Bill Elliott sitting on the pole has the position that's right there with him. They could not blow Elliott off. The Thunderbird takes the lead authoritatively and coming down off turn number two and heading up the back straight, Bill Elliott has the lead. And he may be the one of the guys out there who will try to go all the way in front. Remember, however, you've got, uh-oh, Dale Earnhardt almost got on the wall 
you had another car get loose. It was Earnhardt who almost tipped the wall, and Jeff Bodine's rear end was floating all over the racetrack. Well, what really happened then, Bodine got down in the tree a little hard, Keith, and did slide up into uh, Dale Earnhardt. But both drivers are able to control it, but it was expensive to both of them as they dropped well back off the pace of the leader, Bill Elliott, who is stretching it out right now. They must make, under the green flag, one pit stop under green and take on two tires. And it's going to be interesting to see the theory and philosophy of who might stop first or who will continue to run through 60 or more laps. But right now, the question is whether or not anybody can run down Bill Elliott because he is just flying. The car seems to be working extremely well, Keith, in both corners, and he is just stretching the distance out. All right, let's take a look at what happened as we take another look at it and watch what happens up here coming into turn four. That's the tricky portion of this racetrack. There's been more trouble in turn four than any place else on this racetrack. And you can see Earnhardt going right up against the wall as he and Bodine tipped a little bit, but he fought it off and held his car and is still running and undamaged. So it is Bill Elliott running out in front and we're going to take a look. You see that's 27. That's Rusty Wallace in the Pontiac, qualified at better than 168 miles an hour. And he moved for a moment into second place, taking it away from Tim Richmond. Richmond is third. Neil Bonnet, running in car number 75, is now in that number four position. But look at Elliott stretch it out. Really, Keith, it surprises me that, he, that he's able to do that this early. It's combination, Keith. They've got the right combination going for them right now in this segment, and uh, we'll see what happens. There was another thing about tires and uh, a racetrack that's sticky, a racetrack that could get a little slick as the day goes on. When you change tires, even though they are identical tires, there is no certainty you are going to get the same feel or the same adhesion when you come back out. That's why some of us thought that some of these people might take the early pit stop so that late in this 75 lapper, the first segment, they would have seasoned tires to make that final sprint. Well, that's true, Keith. What will happen is uh, you can't really tell the tire size after they run a while. You know, you've got to measure once you take them off, and you might put a tire on that's way out of kilter, and it just takes the handle of the race car right away from you. Bill Elliott stretching his lead on every lap. Uh, an interview recorded earlier, Bill had this comment about the basic character of the Charlotte Motor Speedway. What kind of a track is it? Charlotte takes the combination. You gotta have engine, you gotta have car, you gotta have driver. You gotta have everybody working together. Plus you gotta, you know, as far as Sunday goes, you gotta have the crew to get you in and out of the pits, you know, for the first segment of the race anyway. Pre-recorded comments of Bill Elliott. Dale Earnhardt, incidentally, who has won six races and nine starts this year, in that little shot or a little moment up there in the fourth turn, he dropped from number four spot all the way back to tenth spot, and he has not been able to improve himself. And right now, there's a pretty good-sized gap uh, between uh, eight and seven. Earnhardt has moved himself up a couple of spots, but he's, uh, he's pretty well back right now. Bodine, who is running in the number position. But your runaway leader right now in the first segment of 75 laps in the Winston is Bill Elliott. Bill Elliott is dusting them off after 10 laps in the 75-lap first segment of the Winston with $600,000 total prize money. Back in the pack, however, there's uh, some interest going on. Rusty Wallace holding on to second place. Tim Mitch Richmond is running third. Neil Bonnet is a distant fourth and being crowded now by Davey Allison. But Davey Allison now just fell off the pace a bit and lost a couple of spots himself as Darrell Waldrop has made a bold move. He has come now from the ninth position and he is running fifth. So Darrell Waltrip has worked his way from nine to five. And he'll, he's a grinder. He'll hang in there and grind and grind and grind. But right now, the way Bill Elliott's running, and then you've got the following cars of Wallace and Richmond, and then everybody else is way back there. And really losing ground, Keith. Uh, Earnhardt is having an awful problem in one and two, like his car is pushing or something. And, uh, 
you know, he got taken back in that first uh, first lap melee, and he just hadn't overcome that yet. Donnie Allison is with us. Dr. Jerry Punch is standing by along pit road, and so far no one has shown any inclination to duck in early and uh, pick up uh, an early pit stop. But you've got to make one, remember, under green. Up here we got a car. It's Greg Sachs, number 50, heading down pit road. So there's a car coming in early. He may have something wrong. It may be their strategy for him to do that. But Bill Elliott now way, way out in front, running in second place, Rusty Wallace, followed by Tim Richmond. Then it's Jeff Bodine and Daryl Waltrip. Dale Earnhardt now creeping past three cars and has moved up in right behind uh, Daryl Waltrip. Let's find out about how things are going with the Elliott car. Obviously pretty well. Here's Jerry Punch. Well, they're all smiles in the Elliott pit, and this is Ernie Elliott, Bill Elliott's older brother and crew chief. And Ernie, are you you got to be a little bit surprised about how quickly Bill went out front and the cars are sort of left in his wake. Are you pleased with the way the car's running so far? Yeah, the car's really running good. You know, I'm really surprised that everybody else is not running. You know, but since this race is in three segments, this is an awful long race. It, it's, it, it's nothing to really be concerned about now. They don't even feel they're using all the car right now, and that's maybe a bad omen for the rest of the field because Bill Elliott really isn't putting the entire pedal in it, so that may be something to think about later on in the day. All right, Jerry, thank you. Incidentally, Greg Sachs pit time, 15.1 seconds. He picked up his two tires. He picked up a splash of fuel and was gone. That's a good pit stop for him, Donnie Allison. Yeah, it was, but uh, he did lose a lot of time coming in, uh, Keith. I don't know what was his problem, but he did lose a lot of time getting into the pit. Yeah, you got to come blowing down that road in a hurry, and uh, he came off uh, at a relatively low speed, and his pit's located at the other end, so he, he coasted along for quite a ways. There's your running order now, as uh, we are working lap 16, and Bill Elliott's increasing his lead. I mean, he's just blowing them off. About three and a half seconds between first and second at lap 16. Right now, it's uh, Tim Richmond hanging on to the coattail, or tailpipe if you like, whatever you want to call it, of Rusty Wallace. And I thought it was a bit of a bold move by young Rusty Wallace early on in the race as he blew by three cars and jumped right into the thick of things and now has settled into what seems to be a comfortable second place. You've got a, a, a mixture here, Donnie Allison, of the old warriors and, and the newcomers, and. Uh, the young'uns are hanging in there pretty well, aren't they? They sure are, and if you notice on the side of Darrell Walton's car, there's a great big tire mark already, and uh, you know, I'm sure that came from that first lap uh, uh, scrape up there in turn three and four, but uh, they've been running pretty close, and uh, Neil Bonnet just got under uh, Dale Earnhardt coming off too. I tell you, it could have been, you could have taken out a half a dozen cars in that if it hadn't been skilled men handling it, because uh, they were all so much, so tightly together, that Bodine, Earnhardt, Bonnet, uh, and two or three others could very well have, have gone. He Tim came. Richmond remains an interesting story, though. Tim came down with Rocky Ligonia and really had a hard time after the Riverside event last year. And, of course, that's a question about how well he'll be able to run today. So we put the question to him as to what his conditioning program has been. Well, mainly the diet consisted of, of everything I could get my hands on. Uh, right now, I'm at uh, a slight heavier 176 or 77 than I would like to be, and I was down to 148, uh, which for me, that's, I mean, that's like a toothpick, I think. Uh, and basically, even up to this point, there's been recently walking, swimming, some tennis, um, laying real close to the water, and doing my neck exercises <laughs> the beach on the beach <laughs> but uh, other than that I haven't had enough strength to really go out and do any weight training or anything like that it's just been one of a very gradual uh, you know, process of training um, plus it's you know I've, I've been very timid to take what I could have been too big a step that might have put me back into the condition I was in December. So I've been very timid as far as what I do to, to, to get back into shape for fear of going back the other way, for fear of, uh, you know, just going backwards instead of forwards. 
Right now, Tim Richmond is running third in the Winston behind Rusty Wallace. The runaway leader right now in the T-Bird is Bill Elliott, who won the Daytona 500 earlier this year after having that incredible season a year ago. I mean, uh, a million dollar season is becoming sort of commonplace with this Elliott bunch from Dawsonville, Georgia. Keith, see that it's an enormous lead. Yes, Donnie. Keith, he's beating them about two mile an hour per lap. Uh, you know, and I, I never dreamed this would happen uh, in a race with this many good cars that somebody would be able to dominate that, that much. And one of the factors in the race, remember this, is the assumption of the lead. Now, he's got to make a pit stop, and I really don't understand. The only way I can see that Bill Elliott could go wire to wire, including the mandatory pit stop, if he got lucky. If he came down, committed himself to the pit stop, and headed for pit road on commitment, and then he lucked out and got a yellow, then conceivably he could be a wire to wire winner. Otherwise, I don't see how you could lead it wire to wire. Right now, running in second place, but my goodness, almost a full straightaway behind him is Rusty Wallace, followed closely by Tim Richmond. Cale Yarborough is way behind the crowd now. You see that Cale qualified at just over 164 miles an hour, so his equipment right now is really not competitive with the rest of the field. Uh, but that's one of the rigors of becoming a car owner because he has, like Buddy Baker, become a car owner. But let's watch through our race cam now and, and get a feel of what it's like to run this racetrack and from a man who has had good times and bad times on the Charlotte Motor Speedway, Donnie Allison. Well, Keith, we're coming out uh, onto the front straightaway now, which you know is not a straightaway. It's like a trioval. It's got two little bends in it. And then number one corner and number two corner are completely different than three and four. And uh, uh, you have a tendency to get into this corner a little bit too hard sometimes and uh, make the car get out of the bottom lane. But the ideal place is to stay in the bottom. Down the back straightaway, coming to turn three, you know, it's basically the same thing. You want to keep the car right in the bottom of the racetrack. Well, see right there, Keel's car moves up about a half a width or three quarters of a car width, and that's not ideal. And that's the reason why Keel is not running well right now. All right, he's passing in front of the main grandstand, heading into turn number one. Let's tilt the camera down a bit here and look at what he's doing with his feet. You use the brakes a lot on this racetrack, don't you? Well, Keith, really, uh, you don't use the brakes very hard at all. You do use them a little bit, and it is it is hard on a driver that drives with his right foot. I use my left foot on the brake, so I don't have to transfer my foot from, from side to side. But uh, you don't use the brakes very hard, but it is time consuming to take your foot off the gas. If you watch going into turn one, now you'll see, there he is, he's in the brakes. Now he's back in the gas, and uh, that's very time consuming here. All right, now, when he's doing that, though, he's really not feathering it, is he? He's not easing it in there. He's, he's, when you take your foot off of there, you, you lose that feathering effect. Right, and these particular type cars, Keith, uh, really feel better with your foot on the gas, but like I said, you do have to take your foot off when you are a right foot breaker. Well, I don't usually get all the way out of the gas when I drive the car with my right foot on the gas and left foot on the brake. Of course, maybe some people can't brake with the left foot. I can't. <laughs> so maybe it's one of those little things that uh, Kale has never quite mastered, but nonetheless, He's well back in the field right now. The running order up front, as you see, Bill Elliott way out in front. We'll be back after this commercial and a word from our local stations. Bill Elliott, awesome Bill, continues to smoke him. He's running about five seconds ahead now of the second place car, Rusty Wallace, and he's lapped a couple of cars, including Greg Sachs. It turns out that Greg Sachs' pit stop was not strategic at all. It was a necessity. Let's get the story from Dr. Jerry Punch. Indeed it was, Keith. It was an unscheduled pit stop. Now, the requirements for this race are one pit stop. You've got to make one green flag pit stop and change at least two tires. You can put three or four. You can put one in the trunk if you want to, but you've got to change at least two tires. The Greg Sachs pit stop was a necessity. You look here, this is the right rear tire off Sachs' car. It has a hole in it. The tire was going flat. Sachs was losing control of the car. They had to come in. They have now made their green flag stop a lot earlier than they wanted to make it, but it's already been made. As far as the other leaders are concerned, well, the consensus down here is that possibly Bill Elliott, Dale Earnhardt, and many others will make their stop in and around lap 60. Maybe lap 58, maybe lap 62, but 
around lap 60, most of the leaders should be making their scheduled green flag stop. Jerry, can I ask you, did Greg Sachs take on fuel so that he can run the rest of the race? Uh, yes, he did, Keith. He took on two tires and a full can of fuel, so he should be okay. Now, they probably would like to have a caution to make sure, because he came in very, very early, but they probably could stretch it and go the full 75 laps. All right, we've got Davey Allison headed right at you now, car number 28. Let's see whether or not that's planned or whether it's uh, considered a necessity. Gas is going in his car and two tires on the right side. This, of course, the son of Bobby Allison, the nephew of Donnie. You know him well, Donnie. You're high on him. I sure do, Keith, and uh, the kid is doing a real fine job, and so is his pit crew. If you notice, he just left pit road. Yes, he did. He's in and out in a hurry. He's loaded with fuel. He's got four tires. His time in the pits for Davy Allison, 13.7 seconds. Let's talk about tires and this racetrack now as we continue to watch him run and Elliott lead. Sometimes, sometimes when you put fresh tires on, you haven't got the same factoring. You don't have the same feel of the car. But eventually, as you wear those tires and grind them down, you'll get that feel back. You get more stick. Well, what really happens, Keith, the uh, stagger gets off, and uh, it takes the heat to get a back ride, and uh, sometimes you don't hit it. Sometimes you're unlucky and don't hit it, but usually you do hit it, and you know what you're looking for, and uh, uh, it works out. You're looking at second, third, and fourth, the yellow car up in front, running in second place. Jeff Bodine, Tim Richmond, and Rusty Wallace now has dropped from second back to fourth. So Wallace has uh, given up position on the racetrack. In the meantime, Daryl Waldrip continues to grind away, and so does Dale Earnhardt. Earnhardt now is tucked in behind Waldrip and would be running in number six position. I guess, not in the basic uh, attitude uh, Based on what I'm seeing here, one is Elliott's cars right now. The combination is so much faster than anybody else. Uh, the feeling is that I'm going to, like you said, I'm going to go out there and let it rip and take my chances and, uh, and see what happens. Well, I think right now, uh, Keith, he's not worried all about assuming the lead. He wants to get this 75 lap done, and his car shows right now that he's strong enough. It doesn't make any difference where he starts in the second segment. And... Uh, no, I think assuming the lead, uh, that was a little bit, uh, a little bit far-fetched. I don't think that anybody's really worried about that. They feel like if their car's good enough, they're going to win the race anyway. Well, the intent in the planning and development of this particular format, and it was done uh, much at the hand, under the hand of Les Richter, who is now the vice president of uh, competition and development for NASCAR. Of course, all of many of you may remember Les as an All-American, All-Pro linebacker and used to run the Riverside International Raceway for many years. He's now with NASCAR, living in Florida. And what they were trying to do, they kept emphasizing, we're trying to force out into the open the most aggressive race driver in NASCAR competition. And at this particular point, the format has not done that. Well, I really think it has, Keith. Uh, the most aggressive right now is Bill Elliott, because he's driving away and leaving them. And, uh, you know, that's that's our sport. That's what we're supposed to do. Uh, you know, like I said in the, in the opening, uh, in 27 years, I never gave the lead up willfully. But when you got a guy sitting out there 300 yards in front of everybody else, or ain't more than that now, it's a full straightaway lead that Elliott has over Bodine. Uh, there is no chance for somebody else back in the back to, uh, to be aggressive. There's no chance for them to get a shot at the lead until such time. Uh, Bill Elliott decides to take the pit stop. Now, there's the difference between first and second place. It's enormous, eight and a half seconds. That's on lap 42. Let's go to the Davy Allison pit now, Dr. Jerry Punch. If you came in and pitted about 20 laps before you had planned to, why the early pit stop? Well, we were going backwards, and uh, Davy needed a little bit of help, so, uh, you know, this is a strategy game. We were... Uh, a little bit loose all the way around the racetrack you know and you got to make a scheduled stop anyway so i just wanted to be the first in line and we're running pretty good right now hopefully we'll be right there with them when they pit have you turned him loose now told him to go ahead and put the pedal down and try to catch him yep we're going to give it all we got here with this texco Haviland Ford thunderbird he's doing a real good job for us we're communicating real well and we really got a good chance to win these other two races also 
one of the youngest crew chiefs in the Winston Cup Tour, 25-year-old Joey Knuckles, carried this car to victory lane in Talladega a couple weeks ago with young Davey Allison aboard. Right now, young Davey Allison just gets, got passed by his daddy, Bobby Allison, going into turn number three. And of course, they had quite a weekend over in Talladega, if you remember, where Bobby had that horrendous crash. His car was retained by the wire screen and even though the wire screen held the car, there were some in the crowd who suffered injuries, and Davy Allison went on to win at Talladega. So that's becoming quite a story, father and son. And of course, you have the Petties, Richard and Kyle, also father and son racing out on the track right now. You're looking at the leaders and the pursuers, and we'll be back. We're in lap 48 of segment one, one of three in the Winston. Total prize money, 600,000. First place in the finale, 10 lapper, guaranteed 200,000. Here's your second five. Waltrip hanging in a number six position. Bobby Allison now moved up to number eight. Benny Parsons hanging in there at nine and Harry Gant running in the number 10 position. Next Sunday, ABC Sports goes to Indy for the nation's largest single day sporting event. You'll see live network coverage start to finish for only the second time in Indy 500 history. The action begins at 11 Eastern time, 11 in the morning, 10 Central and 8 o'clock out on the Pacific Coast here on ABC Sports. This may well be the most docile of the three segments. The next segment after a 10 minute break will be 50 laps. 50 laps, that's 75 miles, and then comes that 10 lap finale. You would think there'll be some rattling around, possibly in late in that 50 lapper, but surely in the 10 lapper. So we put the question to Jeff Bodine. Do you always keep your cool when somebody has rattled your gas tank? Well, it's always very hard to control your emotions, your temper if you have one keep your cool uh, just under normal racing conditions uh, but that's that's a very important part of this sport now is, is to maintain a level head to realize what your object objectives are and, and go through and follow through and, and do that during a race it's very easy to get too racy out there especially in a 600 mile race uh, uh, this format of the Winston is shorter segments uh, it's more of a sprint race so maybe we can attack this race a little differently, attack our competition a little differently, but oh yeah, you get bumped, uh, you want to retaliate, you want to bump the guy back, uh, but you have to remember, boy, you know, if I do, I might wreck, if I, I might cut a tire, I might put a fender on a tire, so you really have to try to remain cool and just do the best you can under any circumstance, if it's rough or if it isn't rough. When you're going 165, 170 miles an hour on a mile and a half racetrack. Uh, here's Bobby Allison now on pit road. Jeff Bodine running in second place. That's why experience is such a factor. When you're going at these speeds, a lot of it has to be instinctive. Now let's watch the Allison pit stop. See how Bobby makes out. He's taking his two tires. He's taking fuel. They had some now in. They had some kind of mess up, uh, Keith. There was nobody at the right rear tire. I don't know whether the gun messed up or what, but that's very costly. Long time in there. Where's Elliot? He's not going to drop a lap. Now Benny Parsons is coming down pit road. There's Elliot coming in. The leader is on pit road, headed for his stop at lap 55. So Bobby Allison had a poor pit stop. Allison in the pits for 22.1 seconds. Dale Earnhardt is in. They're all coming now. Elliott in and out and gone. 12.2 seconds. That's an outstanding stop for the leader, Bill Elliott. Bodine has taken the lead, so that's an assumption of the lead for Bodine. But Bodine has now got to come back into the pits. So after all the pit stops are made, then we will find out who is where and what their possibilities are. But they all took off and they all ran past 50 laps uh, unless there was a reason for them coming in. 
And uh, Richmond overshot his pit just a little bit. But uh, he's getting tires and fuel now. And it's a pretty good stop for him. And hurrying down pit road is Terry Labonte. Sliding, 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 and finally stopping. Didn't quite get into his pits because as Richmond was coming out, Labonte was coming in. And it had to be a heads-up move by both of them. Harry Gant has also made his pit stop. And Rusty Wallace is in. And so is Cale Yarborough. The leader out on the racetrack right now is Jeff Bodine. Richard Petty is coming in. And Bodine has got to be thinking about coming in pretty quickly himself. Buddy Baker is also on pit road for his stop. So there will be some shuffling of positions now as they come in for their tires. Bodine gives up the lead and comes down pit road. All of this going on between laps 54 and 60. Right now they're on 58. Elliott went in and out in 12.2 seconds. Bodine's taking on four tires, Donnie. No, he's not. He, he's, uh, he changed the left side. He's put to the inside tire. Right. Why would he do that? I don't have any idea. I also saw Earnhardt do that. Right now, Kyle Petty is the leader on the track. Car number 21. The younger Petty. But he's got to come to the pits, too. A question on the, in the Bodine pit as to why left side tire very much. Bodine. And Gary Nelson standing with me, the crew chief for Jeff Bodine. And Gary, you took left side tires on instead of right. Why that? Uh, basically, because we can change lefts quicker than we can right. Uh, tire wear doesn't seem to be a problem. Uh, just a little ways to the finish. We want to try and lead a couple laps after the leader pitted because that helps you in the starting position later. Left sides get you out quicker, so we should be able to finish second now. What is Jeff saying about the track itself, the track conditions? Started off uh, a little bit on the loose side, and it got pretty good. We'll talk a little more when the, the race is over. We'll make a decision on what to do to beat that forward. That's Gary Nelson, the crew chief for Jeff Bodine. Kyle Petty has ducked in and out of the pits. Good, pretty good stop. 30 seconds for him. And Bill Elliott is back into the lead. And he's been out there most of the day, having given it up. You see he's running right there behind Bobby Allison. So Bill Elliott in that T-Bird is just really flying today as we pass lap 60. The top five, Elliott, Wallace, Earnhardt, Waltrip, and Richmond. You see Waltrip now has moved up to the number four position. Earnhardt, who has won six of nine so far this year, got into a little shot early on in the race in turn four where he and Bodine nipped, and Earnhardt almost went into the wall, and uh, he has never really recovered from it. I think he's recovered a little bit from it now, Keith. He is uh, on the move, and uh, I don't know whether it's a strategy or not. It's not like Dale Earnhardt to run back there, though. No, it isn't. Of course, he dropped from fourth to tenth. So right, he thing. went a long ways back, and he's gained some of back. Right now, Earnhardt has moved past the wall trip. And the leader is Bill Elliott. Like I said, this figured to be the most docile of the three segments. The next one will be for 50 laps after a 10 minute break. Now you can do anything you want during that 10 minutes in repairing the car or changing the car. If you're good enough, you can change an engine, I suppose, but there's no way in the world that, that any of us believe anybody can change an engine in 10 minutes. Got a car spinning. Neil Bonnet, Richard Petty. Bonnet in turn three and four, between three and four. Petty, Bonnet and Petty get tangled up. Richard Petty, Bonnet hits the wall, comes to rest inside. Petty is able to continue and is making his way down pit road. So two gone. The first real shot of the day, Richard Petty there, damaged severely as you see, probably headed undoubtedly for the garage. And Neil Bonnet, who crashed into the wall, spun around, didn't seem to hit the wall all that hard, but nonetheless probably is finished for the day. So you've got two gone. Richard Petty heading straight for the garage. Ripped up pretty hard on that right front. And so the field is now reduced to 18. And the leader is Bill Elliott. 
Last year, Richard had a severe accident up there in turn number four, one of the toughest of his career. And it brings out, obviously, a yellow flag, and the field slows down. Well, this goes back to the old pun, Donnie, about Monsieur Debris showing up. And in NASCAR racing, when that yellow flag comes out and the pace car is out on the lap, everybody closes up. Right, Keith, and it surprises me that more cars, uh, Davey Allison came in the pits, but I haven't seen anybody else come in the pits. Well, now here comes uh, Benny Parsons, but, uh, you know, we have... Well, Davey, for the second time, taking a pair of right side tires, and they go whipping around. Looks like they're going to put on four tires. They're going to put all four on, right. So they're under yellow, so it's a good time to do it. Yellow flag laps do count here in the first two segments. But when you get down to the end of the day in that 10-lap finale, all of the counting laps have to be run under green. Neil Bonnet's car there being picked up. And Neil is still in the car, and you see the ambulance there. The stretcher is out with the medical people. And we're waiting to see as to what his condition might be, because I did not see Neil Bonnet get out of the car after he hit the wall. It did not seem he hit it very, very hard, though he did spin into it. And when you're going 160 miles an hour, obviously you're going to hit it hard. But I mean, relatively speaking, with the way these cars are constructed, oftentimes a man will walk away from a shunt like that. But so far, uh, Neil Bonnet has not walked away from it. Keith, he hit it pretty hard. As you see that big black mark over there up in the wall, it, he did hit the wall pretty hard. I guess it's. Uh, you got 10 laps to go as we pass 65. I guess it has to do too with the uh, with the angle that you hit it, doesn't it? Very definitely, very definitely. The angle that is critical, and uh, you know he could have got a bruised shoulder or something like that. And well, you had a tough one here yourself. About in that same place too. Yeah. All right. Uh, you got two cars out. And we're still waiting to get some word uh, relative to the condition of Dale Earnhardt, who, uh, not Dale Earnhardt, but uh, Neil Bonnet, who did not climb out of the car himself. And there's a cluster of medical people around that car right now. When the uh, accident happened, Bill Elliott had gone back into the lead. Richard Petty was involved in the accident with Bonnet. And right now, Dr. Jerry Punch is with him. First of all, Richard, are you okay? Yeah, I'm all right. What happened up there? Uh, the 50 uh, blew an engine. Uh, you know, I was racing with a 33 car, and uh, 33 went under him, and, and the 50 was on the outside, and just as we started in the corner, he blew an engine. And I went low, and then he come low, and I didn't get quite enough on the outside of him, and I just clipped him enough to turn my car. Well, this car can't be good luck for you. This is the one they repaired in Daytona a couple of years ago when you hit your shoulder and dislocated. I think I took this car out and put it somewhere and hide it. Well, I, th I think after it's beat up good enough today, I imagine they won't mess with it. We'll go home and get another for the 600. Well, better luck to you on the 600. Richard Petty's car pretty heavily damaged as we would, uh, the front of the car completely sheared away as the Petty car. Let's take a look at the front of the car. You see the front of the car where it came into contact up there, sheet metal pulled away, the tire shoved back in, complete front end damaged. Part of the frame is bent. Looks like this car may be through forever as a race car. All right, Jerry, it was Neil Bonnet in car number 75, not to Greg Sachs in car number 50. They are painted identically. They look just alike, and I'm sure that Richard looked up in, this, in, in the shock of the moment and saw that coloring and assumed it was 50, but it was not. It was Neil Bonnet who dropped the engine, dropped the oil, set the whole thing in motion, and Bonnet has now been put into an ambulance and apparently is going off to the hospital. We cannot at this moment give you an indication of exactly what the problem might be with him, but his automobile is under tow now, headed for the garage and out of the race, and there are 18 automobiles out on the track. The oil dry has been put down now, and the yellow is still out and perhaps will be for some time. Next Saturday, ABC's Wide World of Sports features a live world championship rematch. Light heavyweight champion Marvin Johnson defeated Leslie Stewart to get the crown, now it's the rematch to give Stewart his chance to avenge his only pro loss and win back the title. Plus a live Indianapolis 500 report and Wide World's Athlete of the Week award Saturday at 4.30 Eastern and Pacific, 3.30 Central here on ABC Sports. Now they have closed back. Is there any reason, Donnie Allison, to think that perhaps there is someone back two or three or four positions that could now take a run? 
at Bill Elliott? I, I just don't think so right now, Keith. That, uh, I know that Bodine was running awful good before the pit stops, and so was Darrell Walter. And, uh, you know, they're second and third right now, so we'll see what happens. But Bill Elliott was awful strong. All right, it's Elliott, Bodine, Waltrip is now third. Earnhardt is now four. And Earnhardt has been in practice all week, running faster than anybody else through the middle of the turns, followed by number five, Rusty Wallace. There's Dale Earnhardt right now. And uh, he's been on a bit of a roll this year, having won six out of nine races and pocketed a whole bunch of money. Well, I'll tell you, Keith, in uh, practice yesterday afternoon, he by far looked like the best car. And, uh, you know, I'm surprised. I don't know whether he got a little damage up in the corner there when the race first started or what, but I'm surprised that his car is not a little better than it is right now. The field working its way down from the top toward the bottom, which is thinning out and dissipating the oil dry and dissipating the oil that was dropped on the racetrack by the blown engine of Neil Bonnet. And the yellow continues, and I'm sure we're going to get at least one, maybe two more yellow flag laps. The yellow flag laps do count here in the first segment. The only place in today's competition where the yellow flag laps do not count will be in your 10 lap finale. And right now, the way things have developed, you've got to put your finger right on uh, car number nine, Bill Elliott, when it comes down to uh, an all out shootout in a 10 lapper. There's your first five running order. And your second five, Richmond, Rudd, Gant, Petty, Kyle Petty, and Benny Parsons, uh, Richard Petty, obviously out of the race. The lead assumptions, uh, let's see, you had, uh, you had Kyle Petty in the lead one time. You had uh, Bill Elliott in the lead two times. So as far as lead assumptions right now, Bodine one time. So right now, Bill Elliott is sitting in the catbird seat. He seems to have the strongest, fastest automobile on the track. He has two lead assumptions. And right now, there's very little reason not to think that he's not going to be the pole sitter for the second segment as we come up on 70 laps. One of the things, if you ever go to a, a NASCAR race and you want to know when you got one lap to go, watch the man, the flag man, out of the start-finish line. If he rolls up that yellow flag and holds it up like a stick, that means one more yellow lap, and then you go. Right, Keith, and they turn the caution light out when they do that. As long as the caution light's on on the, on the caution car, you're not going to get a start. He's turned the lights off now, and so everybody all the way down the line can uh, look and see the yellow lights on the racetrack. However, they continue to blink. But every driver out there knows well when that blinking light on the top of the pace car goes out. Next time around, we're going to drop the hammer. Buddy Baker is sitting right alongside of Bill Elliott. Baker is inside there in the blue and white car. Elliott is topside in the red car. And it'll be entered. Bodine's right behind Elliott. And you see Waltrip there in the orange looking car. He's wiggling around right behind Bodine. So it'll be interesting to see because you know full well when that green comes, Buddy Baker's going to stick his foot all the way to the carburetor. He's right, a lap down, but he can get in the way. Yeah, see, all the, all the cars on the inside line are lapped down. It really makes it critical getting turn one, especially with a car that runs as good as Buddy's does. Uh, he'll carry Elliott in a little bit too hard. and. Uh, could get very hairy in turn one. At the end of this, you'll have four laps to go, I uh, do believe. We'll be completing lap number 71 right here. The pace car is out of the way now and down pit road. And here they come, and Elliott just rockets into the lead. I think Waltrip was pushing Bodine. Looked to me like he had his bumper very right definitely, on him. Very definitely was pushing Keith. And now Bodine, a little bit slow for the acceleration, is now going down the back straight and has uh, Bill Elliott in his sights, closing in on him. Bodine is in the gold and white car right behind the leader Elliott. The Waltrip is now running third. Dale Earnhardt is now running four. Rusty Wallace is five. Let's watch Earnhardt for a moment as you look back here. Now watch Earnhardt in that yellow and blue car. See if he can run those turns a little faster. See him close up in the middle. Now can he hold on? He picked up some in the middle of the turn, but he can't gain on the straightaway. A 
Again, he's going to close a little bit in the middle of that turn. But Bodine right now is tucked right in behind Bill Elliott, Darrell Waltrip behind him, and Earnhardt. Two laps to go. Bodine is hanging on tenaciously. Elliott was so dominant and was rocketing off into the lead, but Bodine got a gentle nudge from Waltrip coming down the front straight and closed Bodine right in behind him. So the issue is not resolved. White flag, one to go. Elliott's got Bodine on his hip. Waltrip doesn't seem to have the sock. The only man who will have a shot at Elliott is Bodine. Elliott has two leads. Bodine one. Elliott stretches it a bit on the back straight. Working three. Bodine closes in the middle. Earnhardt is dropped back. It's going to be Bill Elliott. Streaking to win segment number one. Bodine second. Waltrip third. Earnhardt four. Wallace five. Richmond six. And it's a photo for seven. Well, you know, if we go back to the pit stop, Keith, uh, uh, the guy that really put on the show at the end put on left side tires, not right side tires. That was... That was Bodine. Interesting little move, wasn't it? They went for the left side. All right, let's go back to that uh, restart after the yellow and try to watch it very carefully and we'll see if we can use our telestrator here to show you where literally Daryl Waltrip is going to put his bumper put his bumper on uh, right there right there a little bit <laughs> I had trouble with this thing right there you'll see that in that group Waltrip in the gold car right here literally put his bumper on Bodine and gave him a nudge when it looked like Elliott was going to take off and run away from everybody. He got a nudge there, right there. And all of a sudden he hooked on to uh, Bill Elliott and hung on to him, but he didn't meet him. And Elliott comes streaking across. So Bill Elliott will be your pole sitter for segment number two, which will be run over a distance of 50 laps on this mile and a half speedway. 25000 dollars bonus goes to Bill Elliott for winning segment one. There's the clock. You've got 720 left in their 10-minute break. There was one wreck. It took out Neil Bonnet, blown engine. He got in the, a shunt with uh, Richard Petty, it took them both out of the race. We are now going to confirm the condition of Neil Bonnet with Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, Bob Rahilly, the car owner for Neil Bonnet, has been inside and they have talked to Neil, and it's good news we have that Neil's awake and alert. I understand they're going to take him in for some other x-rays? Uh, yeah, he said he's all right, but they're just going to take him in for precautionary reasons. They always, they do a real good job of making sure those guys are really okay when they say they are. Well, the word we have here, they're going to x-ray his neck, his right elbow, and his right knee. Otherwise, he should be okay, and that's good news for all the family and friends and fans of Neil Bonnet. All right. Jerry, thanks very much. All of the cars now getting attention. Bill Elliott having won the first one. He's from Dawsonville, Georgia. He's a quiet, friendly young man. He's an interesting young man in many ways because that quiet demeanor hides a big heart. Let's meet him up close and personal, Jack Aroot. I'm Dawsonville, Georgia's race driving son. My car's number nine, a running son of a gun. I got my start when I was just 17. A driving a car on my daddy's race team. But now things are different, the crowd's roar is heard. When I pass the stands in my new Thunderbird. I'm Wild Bill Elliott, a crazy racing man. I'd like to live up to John Wayne if I can. The press thinks I'm country and named me Huck Finn. But if Elton John's country, that's the group I'm in. I fly my own plane, and when I'm in the clouds, Think how that Winston Cup would make my family proud. I'm driving my best when I make them tires burn, and I still give her hell when I hit my last turn. The year was 1985, and the place, a rural community 60 miles north of Atlanta, Georgia, called Dawsonville. From this shop, the local car dealer's three sons would take their dad's racing team and make NASCAR history. 
Theirs was a close-knit group, looking right at home gathered around for a Sunday afternoon picnic. But they were racers. Oldest brother Ernie, the engine man, middle brother Dan, a mechanic, and young Bill, the hard-charging, race-driving man. All three come from a simple southern stock, the kind that cherishes qualities like commitment, country, and family. Near the close of 85, Bill's NASCAR domination had produced 11 victories, but here in Darlington, South Carolina, his life changed forever, grabbing the Southern 500 and with it a $1 million bonus for victories in three of the sport's top four events. It was American Racing's biggest paycheck, and with it, Bill captured the hearts of millions of racing fans. Today, Tiny Dawsonville still looks as if it popped right out of a Norman Rockwell painting. Some changes have taken place. Now Rooster's Filling Station dispenses some million-dollar history with each fill-up. And across the street, the pool hall proudly proclaims the exploits of their hometown hero. Up the road, the Elliott's original shop remains, but now it's just a small part of their sprawling racing complex. The three brothers no longer call the shots by themselves. Their small family-run operation has exploded into a genuine motorsports factory. It's so much different than it was at that time. You know, we were family then. I feel like we're still family now. You, no matter if you've got people from wherever they come from working for you, they're still, you've got to consider them family and a team because that's, that's how they've got to work. You've got to work together to achieve the goal of winning races and winning championships. A triumph in the Daytona 500 has already put Bill in this year's win column, but more are expected. In fact, they're demanded by his fans. Success, money, and glory has exacted its toll, but within Elliott there remains a burning desire for the activities of yesterday. I enjoy working on the race car. I can't keep my hands off the car. You know, I've, I've grown up doing that. I've done it all my life. I had my head under a car, and some guy came by the shop here the other day, and he says, what are you doing working on this? He, I said, I'm no different than anybody else. You know, I can't not work. I've got to be doing something, and I think that's... That's a part of my sanity that I can keep everything going in a direction that, that just is my peace of mind. In the 10-minute break between the segments, ticking away, grinding away, and we see now that Harry Gant's car is being moved into his posture on the starting grid, so apparently they've done everything they feel they can do to that one, and he's ready to go racing. The results of uh, segment one, Bill Elliott, the winner, Bodine, second, Waltrip, third, Earnhardt, four, Rusty Wallace, five. Richmond, Gant, Rudd, Petty, and Labonte, six through ten. And your lap leaders, Elliott led uh, twice. And Bodine and Petty once, and Bill Elliott, of course, the man of the moment. And Dr. Jerry Punch is with him. Well, Bill, you got to be pretty pleased with the way the car ran that first segment. You were pretty dominant out there. Well, we got to worry about two more. You know, another 50 laps and another 10 from there. You know, the car's been working pretty good, and I just hope I can keep it going. Any major changes on the car during this, this rest period? Not really. We're just going to wait and see what it does this time. Well, Bill Elliott going back out to try to do segment number two, just like one, and maybe hold off for that third segment, the wild finish. All right, Jerry, now in the second segment, remember, it's 50 laps, so they don't have to stop here. If you go into the garage here, then you're going to be gone. That's it. So they'll go with no pit stops. And here's the way they line up. Elliot Bodine will be up front. Kyle Petty and Darrell Waltrip will be in row number two. Earnhardt and Wallace in row number three. In row four, it's Richmond and Ghent. Back in row five, Rudd Labonte. Labonte has got a powerhouse of an engine in that car 11, Junior Johnson's car. Row number six, Allison and Shepard, Morgan Shepard. Row number seven, it's Parsons, Benny Parsons, and Buddy Baker. That's a couple of old pros. Row number eight, Cale Yarborough and Davey Allison. And row number nine, it's Bobby Hillen Jr. and Greg Sachs. And the clock grinding now inside of one minute. Now, if you are not on the grid in your position when the pace car leaves, you join at the back of the pack. If you're not on the track, running before the first lap is finished by the lead car, then you are gone from the race. And I'm going to tell you now, there, there's a lot of foot rubber being burned out there as people are shoving automobiles around trying to get them in the right position because there's 20 seconds left. And the only cars I think that are in the proper position right now would be uh, 
maybe Rusty Wallace and Bobby Allison and uh, maybe Benny Parsons. I'm not even sure they're in the exact right position, but they're shoving them around and less than 10 seconds to go. And the pace car is supposed to take off at double zero. And he isn't going. And now we're ticking on past 10 minutes. And they're trying, I'm sure, here in this circumstance to be reasonable about it. But they were supposed to take off. That pace car was supposed to leave when the 10 minutes expired. Jerry? Well, they're still doing a tremendous amount of work here on pit road. As you said, Keith, the 10-minute time period is just about up or has expired. Here's Davy Allison's car, the Ford Thunderbird, and the crew hard at work beneath the car. They're trying to change the rear gearing. It said the gear came out of the car on that final lap as they came by for that Winston flag, completing lap number 75. They have no choice. They have to change the gear. The car will not run without it. They may get left. It's important, you remember, to start segment number two. If you don't start it, you're out of the race completely. So they're trying to hustle and get that gear changed. And you got to remember, that gear must be over 180 degrees in temperature. They have asbestos gloves on. Some of them have nothing on, trying to get that hot gear out and get it exchanged. Pace car's gone, Jerry. So so uh, Davey Allison is in serious trouble. Harry Gant uh, gets out. Bobby Allison's car is now pulling out. Greg Sachs is still up on the rack. Now here's Cale Yarborough and Morgan Shepard moving out. The two cars remaining in the pit, total of 18 running now. They're still working on the gearing of Davey Allison's car. Hot, hot metal. I can't exactly tell what they're doing to Greg Sachs, but they're also underneath car number 50. So two in the pit, 16 out behind the pace car. And uh, we'll just see what happens. You have got to be on the racetrack and running before the lead car completes the first lap. Now, Sachs and Davy Allison are going to have to join at the back of the pack if they are able to get the cars running before they have concluded the two parade laps and the green is dropped. They're frantically bumping and working. Sachs now is gone. Allison's car has dropped off of the jacks and cranked and rolling. So all 18 of them are out there. Well, I tell you, Donnie Allison, you sit in there with that thing jacked up like that. Everybody's up here on the other turn, and you know you're already in the back of the pack, despite you might, the fact you might have earned a higher position. you got to be chewing your knuckles on. You really do, Keith, and it takes an awful strong man to sit there and uh, be quiet and just wait. But it's really hard. I've been in that situation several times, and you want to go so bad, but you can't go until you're ready. All right, they've completed the first parade lap, and the two cars left in the pit, Sachs and Allison, Davy Allison, hustling along, trying to catch up in the back of the pack. Now, Davy Allison's equipment, if in fact everything was done right, if everything is, is proper in his gearing system, he might well have the kind of a car that could make some bold moves through, through the crowd. Well, I think so, Keith. Uh, you know, I saw, besides changing the gear, I did see in that last photo they changed they changed the bar in the back. Again, Jerry Punch. Rick Hendrick, the car owner for Tim Richmond. Rick, how was Tim after that first segment? Tim feels great, Jerry. He, no problem at all. The car was a little loose in the beginning, and uh, they, they did a few things to tighten it up. But he's in great shape. He's ready to go. I don't see any problems whatsoever with Tim. So if we get the car ready for him, he's ready to go. You're splitting your time among the three teams, Richmond, Bodine, and Waltrip? I need some roller skates. <laughs> they need to be closer together. They're all running good, so Bill's strong, but uh, let's keep our fingers crossed. We think we, we can run with him here at the end. Well, this man owns three race cars, three Winston Cup teams, and is now a new part owner of the NBA franchise here locally in Charlotte. <laughs> he's committed to a few bucks. <laughs> All right, they're going to do one more. The yellow flag holding them up here. The pace car light still blinking. It is Bodine on the outside of the front row and Bill Elliott inside front row. And of course, the question everybody is asking right here, is Elliott going to be able to go rocketing away from the pack like he did to start the first segment? That will be probably the single most revealing thing of the day uh, coming off the start of this segment too. If Elliott is able to smoke them off like he did in the first segment, looks like he's going to have a pretty profitable day, Donnie. Well, yes, it does, Keith. But, uh, you know, I think now that, that Bill knows that, that his car is the strongest car in the field, and the other guys are hunting now. You know, he's got everybody else working, and uh, uh, somebody might hit it, but uh, I just don't see it uh, right now. Course, his uh, car's strong. How many times have we seen the 10-cent part doing a $100,000 race car? Many a time. 
It's that little game of fate, fortune, luck, call it what you want. Cale Yarborough, uh, Cale actually, even though he trailed uh, vividly early on in that race, wound up in the middle of the pack here. And he's a, the car that's carrying our race camera, which gives you some interesting and unusual observation to what's going on. The car's down one lap now, and these are carryovers from the first segment. The car's down one lap are Davey Allison, Cale Yarborough, and Buddy Baker. Two laps down, Hillen and Sachs. Bobby Hillen and Greg Sachs are both two laps down. Almost impossible to un unwind yourself uh, over 50 laps on a mile and a half track with this quality equipment and this skill of drivers. If you're down a lap, it's almost you're running for exercise right now. I, I, I believe that, Keith. Uh, it'll be awful hard to get by Elliott and Bodine and those guys to make that lap up. Yep. There's too much gizzard amongst that crowd. Yeah, but you got some door bangers up in there, and Earnhardt, Waltrip, Labonte, and Bodine will hit you a lick too. Elliott basically is a steady, conservative sort of a fellow. He's not. Uh, I don't think I would put him uh, in there as one of the the real hell raisers when it comes to uh, uh, bearing down. He's a competitor. Now I'm not saying that at all, but uh, his basic nature on the racetrack is cool and collected and steady. And he has proven that's a, that's a worthy combination, what with the kind of equipment that the Elliott family puts together up in Dawsonville. Well, I've raced with him a few times on short tracks, uh, Keith, and he doesn't take a whole lot of pushing around. He does something about it. Buddy. They're going to go this time because the caution light is out. He does lay those steely blues on you sometimes, though, in conversation when certain subjects come up. Here comes a pace car down off, and we got a green hanging. And Elliott's jumping, and he's got the lead. Kyle Petty and Daryl Waltrip running in that second uh, row, just almost touching each other as Bill Elliott goes to the lead. Bodine drops in behind him, and Kyle Petty will take third. Earnhardt bidding for four as Waltrip falls off to the outside and goes to five. Lamonti is six. No, it is. That's Wallace, six. But now it is Bill Elliott, and he's trying to dust them off just like he did in the first segment. And he has about a three-car lead after the first lap. Davy Allison has already picked off Greg Sachs. In fact, Davy Allison has picked off three cars, including Cale Yarborough, and has moved up into the number 15 position. Number three is Earnhardt. Number 27 is Wallace in the white car. Bodine's hanging on to Wallace. He hasn't uh, gained much on him on this to maybe a car link this time around. The first four are strung out pretty well, and then comes the rest of the pack. And back in the rest of the pack are some people like Waltrip, who's down low and seemingly losing ground steadily. I'll tell you, the car right now that's picking up the best is number 11. Labonte. Labonte. That's that big engine that uh, Junior Johnson says it's a powerhouse. And when Junior speaks, I think most everybody wants to listen. And he indeed has pulled up into the number five position. So he's running in pretty good shape. Reconfirming Neil Bonnet shaken up in the accident in which he was involved with Richard Petty. Richard's all right, and Neil Bonnet uh, saying he's all right, but he has been sent to the hospital for observation. Bill Elliott is your leader, but he does have pursuers, pursuers who can see it in this segment. Bill Elliott is your leader. But you've got a pretty good scrap going on for second place as Dale Earnhardt now has closed at one time while we were away up in turn four. Looked like he was ready to take a run at Jeff Bodine and take over second place. But he couldn't do it. Now he's trying to line him up one more time. Watch here. I think you'll be able to see how well Earnhardt's car runs through the middle of the turn. See him close in, trying to get that low spot. But he won't do it this time. Meantime, Bill Elliott is stretching it out, stretching it out. Every time around, he's picked up at least a carling. 
This is a 50 lapper. First segment was 75. This one is 50. So we have now clicked along through uh, eight laps so far in segment number two. It is the finale, though, where it gets pretty exciting. As Earnhardt now is low, can he hold Bodine up there? No, can't do it. But I think you'll get him at the end of the straight. Yep, he's established position. He's put the nose in front. Now slams the door on him. And Dale Earnhardt is in second place with Bodine running third. And now Jeff will settle back into the number three position and take a breath. Dale Earnhardt, six wins this year. You know, his daddy was a dandy, Ralph Earnhardt. He'd put you in the cheap seats, I'll guarantee you. Right Tough, quick. <laughs> real competitor. So Jerry Putt put the question to Dale if he had those same tough racing characteristics. Well, uh, something I've learned over the last years is, is and it's took in the, took like uh, to be more like my dad was, he, he was awful patient and he was awful good at, at running consistent laps and just sort of wearing the competition down and, and being there at that right moment and nudging that guy over and throwing that last lap and winning the race. And, uh, he never upset anybody, spun anybody out you know, on purpose or anything. He went in there and raced hard with them, and he'd get in there and race with the best of them, Tiny Lung and all these guys. And I watched him, as I grew up, watched him race like that. And uh, I think it's just coming out more in me now as I'm maturing in the sport. And, uh, you know, I get in there and race hard. I'm serious about it. Uh, when I'm up under you, I'm, I'm serious about getting by you. Uh, I'm going to race you and give you your due. I'm going to give you your room to race out on the outside of me, but I'm still going to take what I think is mine. I can remember some instances, Donnie Allison, where Ralph Earnhardt, he, if anything else, believed that it's in my place on the racetrack, and I'm going to keep it till you take it away. And he made you go the long way to get it. He very definitely believed that, Keith, and uh, I'll tell you, his son does too. Right now, his son is chasing Bill Elliott, and he's, I don't believe he's gaining an inch on him. Elliott's average speed now, through 11 laps in this segment, running right at 168 miles an hour. But if perhaps there is a car out on the racetrack that can run right now with Elliott, one would have to think it would be Dale Earnhardt. Davey Allison picked off eight cars. Remember, though, he was a lap down when uh, he got out on the racetrack and started running. So car number 28, he made a bold move coming from the back of the pack and picked off eight of them in a hurry. But still, he's well back because he is a lap down. But as for his trouble in getting things uh, back on the racetrack, Jerry Punch told us a little while ago they were changing the gears. Jerry, do you have more? Well, Keith, they made a gear change in about seven minutes and 40 seconds. That's almost unheard of in this kind of competition. But the thing they're impressed with, they've been clocking Davey lap after lap. He is running within a few hundredths of a second of what Bill Elliott's running. He's a lap down, but he is really coming on strong. He's passed eight or nine cars these first seven or eight laps at the beginning of this segment. And what you got to remember, this team came here two years ago in this car with Cale Yarborough. They got two laps down, came back, made up both laps, and won the race. And they're not going to quit. They remember what happened in 85. They told Davey Allison all about it, and now they've made a believer out of him. He's on his way to the front. Well, he's closed down on the middle pack, and he's running right behind him, but there is no way, unless something happens, to uh, Bill Elliott, Earnhardt, and Bodine, uh, and even Wallace, I don't think. Maybe Wallace he could get, but uh, I don't believe he can run down uh, those front three. And the front three now beginning to string out pretty good. You see car 28 closing in behind the pack there. But the most damaging factor, in, in so far as Davy Allison's posture is concerned, is the simple fact that he's a lap down to the leader. Racetrack doesn't seem to be slick, Donnie. No, it doesn't. And uh, I just timed Elliot the last lap, and he ran over 167 mile an hour. And that's really fast when he was running in the first segment. Which may mean uh, that the other people have picked up some too. In particular, I would say Earnhardt. But again, you've got to go back in that first segment and remember Earnhardt was in fourth spot. He got involved in the ruckus up there and dropped all the way back to 10. And never totally recovered from it. And so far as the leader was concerned, even though they had a yellow and the field was able to close up. Bobby Allison has not been much of a factor so far in today's race either. 
His car really is not working good at all, uh, Keith. I don't know what their problem is. He ran awful good yesterday in practice, but it's not showing it today. Hale Yarborough hanging in there and running, though his car right now is not running very well either. You might be able to put a phrase on the car that Kale's driving right now that used to apply to his former business interests. And that's turkey. <laughs> because Kale at one time, now I want to tell you, this man's got a sense of humor, so I want you to put your tongue in your cheek when you listen to this story about his adventures as a turkey farmer. A turkey is something that uh, you really have to stay with all the time. And i uh, never forget one time that uh, I was in the National Guard and uh, a thunderstorm came up and I rushed home from the National Guard Armory to uh, check on my turkeys and they were just standing out in the rain looking straight up in it to see where it was coming from, I guess, and just dropping over dead. They were just drowning themselves and looking to see where the water was coming from. And so I realized right then that these were pretty dumb things and uh, Maybe it wasn't, wasn't the way to go. I lost a lot of money in the turkey business. It took me a long time to overcome it. Then on the other hand, I think that it probably made me uh, want to be the best race driver in the, that I could possibly be because there had to be a better way of making a living than raising turkeys. <laughs> you believe that? Don't buy any land for that man. <laughs> oh, he's a dandy. Your leader is Bill Elliott. Dale Earnhardt is running in second place. Jeff Bodine, third. Rusty Wallace, four. And Terry Labonte, five. We'll be back after this commercial. And a word from our local station. Bill Elliott continues to lead. Earnhardt dropping off the pace. Bodine farther back, followed by Wallace and Labonte. Terrell Waltrip. Figured to be one of the chargers, one of the challengers. Had a pretty good start here in the second segment, but fell off the pace dramatically. Is now running 10th. Let's see if there's a story in that as we join Dr. Jerry Punch. We're standing with Waddell Wilson, the crew chief for Darrell Waltrip, and Waddell Darrell has been dropping back. What's the problem? Well, on that 10 minute break, we changed the right rear spring and we changed the tires and made it a couple other adjustments. And and we evidently missed it. So, you know, when we get to stop the next 10 minutes, we're going to change it all back and see if we can't get it going in the right direction at that point in time. How has the track changed? Is the track getting awfully slick out there now? Well, it's not that bad. You know, normally Charlotte is, does get awful slick, but since they've repaved it, it's pretty good. It's staying basically the same. Well, Waddell Wilson has his work cut out for him in that next break. They're going to try to get Darrell Waltrip back in the fray here at the Winston. And of course, that's where the big bucks are, $200,000 to the winner, and that's a, that's a firewall full bore sprint. Bill Elliott now leading by 3.2 seconds over Dale Earnhardt in second place. And he certainly doesn't look like he's gonna be headed. So it could well be that he's already pocketed uh, the biggest prize of the Daytona 500, which he collected a total of about $279,000. And uh, if he wins this, he picks up a bonus of uh, 50,000. So you got 25 in the first one, 50 in the second. And if he wins the third one, he puts $275,000 in his bank account. Man, they'll, they'll roll some red carpet down Main Street in Dawsonville. He comes on with that kind of thing. Buddy Baker pulled in the pit road, went right straight to the garage. And the veteran is out, but Buddy has already had a pretty good day. He won 30 grand in winning the Winston Open. So Buddy is out of the race. And here's Jerry. Well, Buddy Baker just climbing out of the Crisco Oldsmobile and they're trying to decipher what the problem is. Buddy, it wasn't a bad day for you so far. About $40,000 at least after winning the Winston Open, but what put you out of it here? Well, transmission, we just found out. I was looking. I, the car never did run real good uh, in, the, in the last race. And it was slowing up a little bit. What I think we got is a bearing or something seizing up in transmission because it never did really run down the straightaway in that last race. But you got to feel good about taking the checkered flag here in front of the hometown fans in the qualifier earlier today. Oh, yeah, we're happy. Thank you. Well, Buddy Baker out of it here in the Winston. From uh, 15th through 20th place, each starter in the Winston collects 10 grand. So add that on to the 30 of Jerry's right. It's a total of 40 grand today for Buddy Baker, so that'll pay some bills for him. And he is now the owner of that racing team, or part owner of the racing team. This 
event is more for the drivers, I think, than anybody else because they're going to get the big cash. And I'm sure there are a lot of owners who have been pacing all day long with wet palms wondering uh, how many of their expensive race cars might be uh, rattled around because everybody's looking ahead to next weekend in which the World 600 will be run here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. There's your running order of the top 10 as we close down to the end of segment two. Bill Elliott has about a four second lead over Dale Earnhardt with Bodine continuing third and he's a second or so behind Earnhardt. Now, I want you to watch here and see if you can pick up. It looks like the tires are smoking a little bit on Earnhardt's car when he's running the corner, Donnie Allison. Well, I noticed, I noticed that the car looks like it's pushing right up there a little bit, Keith. And uh, Tell me right. what pushing means. Well, that means the front end not turning down in the corner like you'd like to have it. You turn the wheels to the left, but the car wants to go straight. We call that pushing. And uh, right now, Elliot's car seems to be just gliding through that portion of the corner. That's the reason why he's driving away and leaving them. Yeah, he's, he's driving away and leaving them, all right. We told you earlier that the general feeling was that the Junior Johnson group, that uh, Terry Labonte in car number 11, had an engine that would do almost anything, but there's something else missing because he at the moment is not a factor. But that powerful engine might come into play in the 10 lap finale, and Terry Labonte went into this particular event pretty optimistic. So, you know, uh, it's taken us a little while to get things going, but uh, I feel like the second time around, all these racetracks, we're going to be much better than we were the first time around. We've learned a lot. We've made a lot of mistakes, uh, and I believe we're going to be able to apply what we've learned uh, the second time around. And uh, I'm really pleased with the way things, you know, have, have gone and the progress that we've made. And uh, it's really important for us to, to do as good as we possibly can the first time around at the racetracks because that's just going to give us that much more to improve on. So he's out there grinding it, running in the number five spot right now. We've got 10 laps to go as Bill Elliott clearly has the upper hand in the Winston at the moment. Your first place in your 10 lap final worth $200,000. Second place is worth 50 and third place worth 40. A total of 600,000 being spread over this three-second event. Now looking back into the crowd, trying to figure out whether or not, I guess, uh, let's see if we can pick up where Davey Allison might be, because he seems to be running awfully strong after going a lap down and having to have his gear changed and getting out late. But he has... Uh, no, something else has happened. Keith, yeah, he's, he's slowed down, now, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah, he slowed down the last few laps. Uh, he's running 11th now. All right, here's Jerry Punch again with Dick Childress. Well, Richard Childress is the car owner for Dale Earnhardt. And Richard, you've been timing your driver. You're losing about a tenth of a second a lap to Bill Elliott. What can you do during this next 10 minute segment to make up that difference? Well, we'll talk to Dale and try to make some tire adjustments. I don't think a critical chassis change would do it. You know, we're real close. We just need to get the right uh, combination with tires, you know, the right stagger. If you change the stagger, do you believe you start right behind him? Do you believe you can run with him those last 10 laps? Well, you know, we was hoping we'd get the lead this time, you know, where we could get to start up in front of Jeff in the 21 car, but, you know, we just had to see. Track position is going to mean a lot for 10 laps. Well, it should be interesting. The last 10 laps, they'll take the gloves off and go bare knuckles. 10 lap shootout coming up. There's some feeling that uh, Richard Childress, having been an experienced and good solid race driver, having a race driver own and operate a racing team could be an advantage. How do you feel about it, Donnie? Well, really, you know, you got to look at Junior Johnson's uh, operation, everything else. Those guys have been there. They know what goes on. They know when the driver comes in and says something. He's not thinking it up, and uh, it's a definite advantage, I think. Well, clearly, they've had a bonanza so far this year in winning six, this being their 10th competition of the year, and they've put six away to lead in money. One of the surprises so far today has been the in inability of Earl Waltrip to run with the leaders. And of course, uh, nobody, nobody has been able to run so far 
with Bill Elliott. We had that little spurt there in the closing moment after the yellow flag in which Bodine hung on to his tailpipe pretty well. But I don't think even in that instance with five laps to go in this one now, there was ever any real thought that Bodine was going to run him down. I don't think Bill Elliott thought it for a minute. I think that he was content in just finishing that segment and uh, uh, starting his next one. Now, now he's doing the same thing again. He's content to get this over with. and. Uh, then, like you said, we're going to have a 10-lap uh, dash. Yeah, but you can talk about uh, the temper of the moment. Uh, you can talk about the dogged determination. You can talk about all of those human factors you want. But if you don't have the race car to run with a guy like an Elliott, all of those other factors don't mean a dead gun thing. They sure don't. And, uh, you know, it's very, very discouraging when you're sitting out there in a the car doing everything you can do, and a guy pulls away from you like that. And... Uh, Right now, he's, he's just in a class kind of by himself. We're winding it down, heading for the 125th lap. We've run a first segment of 75 laps, now 50, and uh, who is that? Benny Parsons. Harry Gant. Harry Gant. Harry Gant has just ducked into the garage, and he's gone from the race, and that leaves 17. So three cars are gone. Neil Bonnet. Neil Bonnet and uh, Richard Petty involved in an accident in the first segment out of the race. And Harry Gant now has gone uh, into the garage and he's out of it. Jeff Bodine, who ran strong at the start, ran close at the finish of the 75 lapper is uh, clearly Way, way out of it right now as uh, he continues to lose ground and Elliot just seems to be on a string. Yes, you know, I know that's it. Well, really, Keith, what's happening right now is he's not straining himself. You know, he's, he's running a good, smooth race. He's rolling out the throttle, getting in, and uh, uh, the other guys are really straining. They're driving the car down the corner as hard as they can, and then they slide worse. But uh, Elliot's car really surprises me that it is hooked up to finish it in. And he's also, I think he's put Davey Ellison another lap down along with a couple of other cars as he uh, continues to wing it around. So we've got the white flag, one lap to go for the leader, Bill Ellett's. That's your checkered flag, I'm sorry. They're not using the checker and won't use the checker until the end of the 10 lap finale. They put a white flag up there indicating it's over. But uh, out of the corner of my eye, I saw the white, and I thought it was one to go. So it's Elliott's show so far. Earnhardt will finish in second place in the second segment. And we're going to have a visit with Dale Earnhardt. And now he's turned things around in his life, both personally and professionally. So Bill Elliott has collected $25,000 for winning the first segment, $50,000 for winning the second segment. And now as they go 10 laps for $200,000, Bill Elliott will start on the pole. You gotta say, his chances are pretty good. Positions one through five, Elliott, Earnhardt, Bodine, Wallace, Richmond. Second five, Labonte, Allison, Petty, Waltrip, and Rudd. Dale Earnhardt, the son of a racing man. Six wins this year. While we're waiting for see developments in this 10 minute break, let's visit with him. I think the, the biggest thing about my style of racing is I am serious and I am a racer. I do get in there and drive and I race the car, I race the track, I race the competitors. Um, I've gotten trouble because of it, because of my aggressiveness, but it's not been intentional trouble. I, I don't go out trying to, to put somebody in a wreck or, or get into a situation where a, a wreck happens. I have never done anything intentionally trying to wreck somebody. And if I go ever go set in a race car and start out on that racetrack and it's in my mind to, to go out there and wreck somebody, I hope Ralph Earnhardt kicks my tail somehow or another. Ralph Earnhardt was Dale's father, a short track racer who never made it to the big time, not for lack of talent, but because he refused to compromise his family. Ralph died before he could share in his son's successes, and despite the glory of racing triumphs, his father's death still haunts him. 
When you have problems, Jackie, you think back at uh, something Ralph Earnhardt would have did, or what would he do in this situation, or what would he have done? And it really helps me. Uh, I've missed him more because of accomplishments I made, and I, I, I just wished he could be here to be able to do things I do now. Uh, not just the racing, but the deer hunting and things that we do now that, that he really enjoyed doing. You know, I, I miss him more now than I did when he first died. I, I stayed mad for about a year after he died. It made me mad. It didn't it hurt, but it, it, it was, I was mad about it, uh, you know. It took a while to get over that. At first reclusive and somewhat distant, the years have softened the sun's emptiness. Realizing that Ralph may be gone, but that Ralph would have wanted Dale to continue, the younger Earnhardt took hold of his life on and off the track with a little bit of love. I think what really changed my life is getting my kids in, in, uh, under my roof uh, from a previous marriage, and uh, they, they came to live with me. I had custody of them in 1982, Mary and Teresa. I think that really turned it around. Uh, we've built a, a relationship uh, that's, you know, I think second to none. That goes with my racing, just like um, I'm, I'm apple pie goes in America. It's, uh, it's natural. It's getting, it's getting better. Uh, the relationship and the parallels with my racing and my marriage is, and my family life has just, just gotten better as the years went on. It's all getting better together. At the track, better means being the undisputed leader of NASCAR, the defending Winston Cup champion and winner of an unprecedented six races so far this season, while others have won no more than one. Nevertheless, the influence of Ralph Earnhardt and his absence remains. I think he would be proud of, of uh, my career. I think he'd probably kick my butt for doing a, thing, a lot of things I did getting to where I am, uh, sacrificing financially and, and t at times with family. I put my family and my kids uh, through a lot of things uh, for racing that uh, now I'm trying to make up to them. I've tried to, in the last uh, several years, get Dale Earnhardt back into the shape and the, the frame of mind he needs to be in. The, the Ralph Earnhardt frame of mind, I feel like, is uh, what I'm trying to shape it into. A feature with Dale Earnhardt, narrated by Jack Root, who will be giving us a report from Indianapolis about the 500 and what's going on there in just a few moments. The work continues with less than five minutes to go. Back after this commercial and a word from our local stations. Less than two minutes to go before the finale of the Winston, a 10-lap shootout for $200,000 going to the winner. Let's quickly check in at Indianapolis for the latest on the 500 with our colleague, Jack Aroot. Keith, there's less than 90 minutes to go before qualifying ends, and we still have three spots up for grabs here this afternoon. This is the bubble day of qualifying, and after the first 30 minutes this morning, nothing has happened here at the racetrack. But one driver that qualified yesterday to end a two-year retirement is Gordon Johncock. Gordon, it's great to have you back at Indy. Well, thank you, Jack. It's uh, great to be back here and know that we got in on the first attempt yesterday. We all feel great. What about this fact that we still have three spots left up for grabs? Nobody's gone out. Is that a surprise to you? Well, not really. It's so hot. There's been a several of them that went out and tried it, but I was over in the suites a little while ago and watched them and coming through, too, and it, it's so hot they're really not getting a very good bite, and they, don't, they sure don't look very good out there. Now, we have had some action today. Pancho Carter withdrew his car, much the same way Danny Sullivan did, and brought his backup car into the line. He qualified at a much safer speed of 205-plus. Then we had another attempt, and it ended in a crash in turn one. Phil Kruger, who was the chief mechanic on Dennis Firestone's crash, on Dennis Firestone's car, remember Firestone crashed twice. Well, Kruger went out, attempted qualifications, had one lap in, and then it all broke loose in turn one. He crashed the backup Lola, and he's out of the race as well. No more cars for the team, but Kruger's okay. He was removed to the infield hospital, and they said just some contusions on his knees, but it's all over for the month of May for that team. So they continue to practice here at Indianapolis, but wait, in about 30 minutes, we'll see a mad dash for the last three positions. Keith? All right, back here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Cars being moved out onto the grid. Dale Earnhardt is going to be in row two, and he's going to be running right in behind Jeff Bodine alongside Kyle Petty. And the pace car now beginning to crank up and is going to lead the field out onto the track. How do these drivers feel about running a 10-lap shootout? Here's what they said. 
guy, so you can't you can't use a lot of finesse. You just have to go in there and, and you know maybe route your way through, make your own hole. But like I say, no one knows what's going to happen. And you're going to have to be willing to get some negative press when that thing's over, because if somebody's in my way, I'm going to be blowing the horn. I'm going to be trying to go to the front. It's going to be some bent up vendors and. For that kind of money, I think people figure it's going to happen. It's no holes barred, and you just go and do whatever you can. If you don't start in the first two or three spots, then you're going to start right up in the middle of a hurricane. You're going to have, have some fender banging. It's going to be a knockdown drag out. Probably some of the teams are going to be needing backup cars after that last 10 laps. The most wild, outright fight you've ever seen in your life. And that's what's good about it, because the guys that want to get in there and scrap it up, they'll have a chance to do that. I think the devil's going to come out in all of them. <laughs> you know, I look at the first two segments as qualifying races. They pay a lot of money, yes, but still they are really just qualifying races for that last 10 lap dash. That's where all the money comes out. Obviously that pre-recorded, Neil Bonnet is out of the race, having been involved in a wreck. The front row, Bill Elliott, Jeff Bodine. Row two, Kyle Petty, Dale Earnhardt. Row three, Rusty Wallace, Tim Richmond. Row four, Terry Labonte, that big engine, remember that, Bobby Allison with him. Row five, Darrell Waldrop, Ricky Rudd. Row six, Parsons and Shepard. Row seven, Davey Allison, Cale Yarborough. And row eight, Greg Sachs and Bobby Hillen. One lap down, Davey Allison and Cale Yarborough. Three laps down, Greg Sachs and uh, Hillen. So, I think it's fair to say those four have very little chance in this finale. But it adds up to bucks because uh, through 10th place, it pays $10,900. They figure to go around a couple of times. This is the final. 10 laps, 15 miles, $200,000 goes to the winner. And I'm sitting alongside an old warrior here, Donnie Allison, who would love to be out there, wouldn't you? I sure would right now. And uh, I can almost feel it sitting right here, Keith. Uh, I know that Dale doesn't like the idea of starting on the second row outside, but uh, I'll tell you, this is going to be a whale of a 10 lap right here. Out of the race, Bonnet, Petty, Baker, Kent. Four people. 16 cars are out there, but Bill Elliott has been clearly superior with his equipment all day. He jumped to the lead in the first segment. He jumped to the lead in the second segment. He's put away 75,000 already. Pace car, if it drops off the track, green flag is waiting. There he goes, and here they come. Bodine bids for the lead, has it over the line. Elliott, however, is inside. Earnhardt may be pushing Bodine. Bodine going for the lead, tire smoke. Bodine spinning. And Earnhardt goes into the lead as Elliott bumped, shoved out of the way. Elliott is second. Earnhardt has the lead. There are at least three cars involved in that, but only one of them clearly out of it. And yellow flag has come out. They'll race to the yellow. So Earnhardt, who had a big lead of about oh, 100 yards over Bill Elliott, will lose that advantage because of the almost automatic yellow flag. So Elliott will close right in behind Dale Earnhardt. And so for that matter, will the rest of the people. I don't think we actually lost anybody, did we? Even though it was... Uh, now look, Bodine is flying under the yellow flag. Is he down off the racetrack? But Donnie, why would uh, Bodine's heading for the pits? Engine smoking, tires smoking, and Bodine losing, breaking loose literally up there in the middle of the turn. Well, I'll tell you what happened, Keith. Uh, Bodine came down a little bit too soon on Bill Elliott and they got together. That's what started the uh, the whole thing and uh Hillen, Bobby Hillen Jr. comes into the pits. Cale Yarborough comes into the pits. Obviously Bodine is in the pits. So those three cars apparently were the ones affected. Elliot miraculously it looked like he was going to go on the wall and got away with it. Now you see him uh, must have been a tap there. He, he tried to slam the door on Elliot and apparently they tapped 
And you see the tire smoke billowing up. Now watch Elliott. There's a bump again. Watch uh, Earnhardt goes down inside, and Elliott with a brilliant job of driving to keep his car off the wall. And that was a pretty good punch. Very definitely. Another look at it. Yeah, well, you see right there, you see that uh, Bodine did try to come down into the inside line, and, and Elliott was still there. Whether he saw Bill Elliott or not, I don't know, but uh, that's what caused that wreck. Earnhardt way down low on the apron, pops out of there, and let's get the latest information on Bodine's circumstances now from Dr. Jerry Punch. Jeff Bodine's car sitting on pit road. They're trying to get the front end set back in line. The front wheels steering mechanism has been on the car. They had to change all four tires. You see him rolling the car and putting a rolling pin beneath the left front wheel. They're trying to pull the sheet metal away. There is some red paint on the left side of Bodine's car. The red paint that came together up in turns one and two and Jeff Bodine still sitting dejectedly in that Chevrolet waiting to go back on the speedway. All right, well, I have the unusual circumstance now where we have not run a lap because the uh, laps run under yellow do not count. Only the green laps. We'll be back. On the restart, Dale Earnhardt goes to the corner. Clearly the leader, Bill Elliott, tucks in behind him. Bodine is back out on the racetrack, but back in the pack. Toward the rear of the pack. The leader now is Dale Earnhardt. But it's Bill Elliott in that T-Bird that's been running faster than anybody all day, and he closes right in behind. Look how close he is to Earnhardt coming down off turn number four. Eight laps we are running in now, working number eight as Earnhardt. Elliott trying to slide underneath him, and Dale and, won't buy it. And if you notice right there, Keith, there was a little bit of paint a little bit of paint change hands right there, too. Elliott now getting a challenge from Tim Richmond, but he closes again right in behind Earnhardt. Coming down off turn four. And Earnhardt loses it, goes on the grass, comes back, and uh, Elliott goes inside. And Earnhardt still got the lead. Incredible piece of driving by Earnhardt. Seven laps to go. Earnhardt went on the grass, down the home straight, and was still able to hold on to his lead. And now Elliott gives up low and goes high. And he's loose at the turn and has to drop back. He got the wiggling around. Elliott almost went to the wall. And right now it's Terry Labonte with that big engine bidding for the lead alongside Earnhardt. Earnhardt trying to hold him off. Elliott is back in the number four position. Richmond's running third. Earnhardt trying to hold off the challenge of Labonte. Boy, you got some charges up in front now. Earnhardt clearly the leader now. Labonte is right behind him. Richmond right behind uh, Labonte and Elliott trying to take Richmond and does for third place. Keith, you're seeing the race now, buddy. You're really seeing the race. Earnhardt holding on. Labonte's right there. So Look, Elliott lost it. Elliott Elliot almost lost it. it. He almost lost it coming off two. Almost lost it coming off two. He slowed way down. Everybody goes by Bill Elliott. He may be through for the day. It is Earnhardt and Labonte now and Richmond. And Labonte gave us a thrill a moment ago as he made that challenge on Earnhardt getting by Elliott as Earnhardt went to the grass down the home straight and hung on. Elliott going to the pits. Something happened to his car and he just fell right out of it. I think and he's got a flat tire, Keith. He may well have. What's he got, Jerry? Tire, left rear tire on Ben Elliott is flat. The left rear tire going down. He can to come in and make this pit stop, a costly stop for Elliott. That's what happened to him coming off too. But he was involved in two or three different bumping top there, and that may well be where the bad luck bit him. He races after picking up two tires back into the fray, but he's a lap down as Earnhardt had crossed the start finish line. And two hundred thousand dollars waiting as we're working lap number seven. The body is right there. So is Richmond. I guess Tim Richmond now has proven he's 
healthy enough to come back running hard. The ability of Earnhardt to keep his car even through the middle of the turns and run perhaps a little faster through that short section than most of the other people, a distinct advantage right now. But Lordy, he had some highfalutin moments before he could nail it down, didn't he? I'm gonna tell you he did. Elliott's off the pace now, uh, Keith. And Elliott's gone for this one. He picked up 75,000 in the first two segments. Now Earnhardt with the white flag out. He's in the final lap, and he has the lead over Labonte. Richmond is there. Labonte and Richmond will slam it to the firewall. Both of them. But then so will Dale Earnhardt. Here's the sprint down the final straightaway. Off the backside of the mile and a half racetrack, the body looks to the inside. Nothing there. Earnhardt slams the door. Richmond's out of it. No way. He can pick it up in his position, number three. And it is Earnhardt. The body. Richmond. One, two, three. Earnhardt for two hundred thousand dollars. Now look at this. A little kiss there. Somebody ref Earnhardt pretty good when they went by him. And you know everybody's talking about how nice uh, some of these guys are. That kind of a race right there will bring the nice out. <laughs> it exposes it, doesn't it? <laughs> Oh, me. Yes, sir. There was some knuckle busting in that one. And actually, they come out of it in reasonably good shape. Nobody really torn up save the bonnet petty cars. And Earnhardt slides back in in front. Let's go back to the first bumping circumstance here that seemed to bring this on. That's Earnhardt leading. Bill Elliott is right behind him. Now there's a bump right there. Earnhardt is knocked loose down the grass. Going on the grass might have helped him, done it? Yeah, well, I tell you, really, uh, Elliott had to back off because he didn't know which way Earnhardt was going to go coming out of the grass. Now comes the action right now. That put Earnhardt uh, in control, literally, of the race because later on there was another bumping over in turn two and uh, Bill Elliott had uh, both tires go flat on the left side of the car. And uh, I think all of them are battle scarred after that 10 lap scuffle. But the big winner is Dale Earnhardt and here's Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, he's getting, trying to get unhooked and get it congratulated here by the crew and telling them what a great job they did. Dale, a tremendous race. First of all, congratulations on a great win. Well, that was something else. You know, Bill uh, spun that night five car out and caused a big mess, and then he come up there and tried to spin me out twice. I didn't take it. That, uh, when you got hit in the left rear coming through the tri-oval, that's a tremendous job of driving to hang on to the car. What were you, what'd you do to keep the car going straight? <laughs> I just held on to her. I did the best I could with it. You know, I'd like to thank Wrangler and everybody. Uh, good wrench. You know, all the guys who did a super job we kept adjusting on the car all day. It was getting better toward the end, but you know, Bill and them got into it there and spun around and we just missed them. And then I'd be darned if Bill didn't uh, try to knock me out twice. He had me sideways uh, going off of four, two over there and then turned me through the trial. And I, I just lifted him up high just to let him know I was mad. And you know, I didn't try to wreck him, didn't run him in the wall or nothing. Then, then he tried to wreck me after the caution there. I think he was a little upset. Yeah, I'd say he might have been a little upset, but tempers will flare periodically. This is a 10 lap shootout. You said we we're going to take the gloves off and go bare knuckles, and that's what happened. Well, I hate that happen, but the man hit me on, on after we got the checkered flag, he hit me on the back stretch. I think that's a little uh, beyond what we should have been doing. Well, possibly it might have been as Dale Earnhardt will climb out now $200,000 richer after winning the Winston. I thought that was uh, Elliot that went by him and gave him that nip on the left front, but it was a, it was a pretty good little kiss after the checkered flag. Let's go back. Well, here's the first pumpy. Now you see Bodine, that had already uh, happened and, and uh, 
Jeff was gone. Now here's your first puppy coming up there. Well, that's up in uh, in between turn uh, one and two. Right. Uh, swapped a little paint right there. And then after the su succession of uh, bumps and banging out there, uh, Bill Elliott came down off turn number two and started losing pressure in two tires, and he almost lost it right there because the car took a pretty good wobble, and he was right on Earnhardt's tailpipe at that point. But then uh, when you start uh, getting flat tires, uh, you hang on and fight it as best you can to keep the car under control. Well, here's the banging. That's, that's what you call door handle, right, Donnie? Door handle yeah. racing? Well, Earnhardt carried Elliott high then. and uh, Is that when he flipped him? Is Elliott he, didn't like that too much. <laughs> is that what Dale said? He gave him a little flip, put him right. up high uh -huh. just to, to let him know that his temper was getting short too. All right, here's Jerry Punch again. Richard, Richard Childress here with me. Richard, can you believe he hung on to that car in the trial when he got tapped? When, you know, when, when Elliott stayed in the gas and kept pushing him across the grass there, I just thought it was all over then, but Dale's a great race driver, and he proved it right there. A man that can hang on to a car like that deserves to win, in my opinion. Well, again, congratulations for a great team effort. Thank you very much. Well, it's done, and I reckon they'll be arguing for weeks over the format and what went on today, but we'll be back with more right after this. Well, the victory celebration's on for Dale Earnhardt, Richard Childress, and uh, their crew as they picked up 200 grand. But uh, we saw the tempers flare in that finale. And Dr. Jerry Punch can give us the other side of it from Bill Elliott. Well, Keith, indeed, there were some tempers flaring. And, Bill, those last 10 laps were crazy. Everyone expected them to be, but they really were. But the thing of it is, Dale spun Jeff out down there. Then he come back. And then whenever he got, I was clearly under him down there in one and two, and I was plumbed down on the apron. He cut down on me, and he claimed I went up on him, and I was plumbed down on the apron. You know, and he cut down on me. Then we come down the front straightaway, and I was clearly under him right here. And then he cut down on me there and nearly spun himself out. And then he let me on the outside of him down the back straightaway and run me like straight in the wall. You know, he said that the, he was trying to keep the lead, but it looked like you two guys were just uh, almost both bought it here in the trioval area. Yeah, but the thing of it is, I was clearly under him, and I had I was going on. I cl clearly had the quickest car. You know, he was trying to cut me off every way he could. Do you think anybody could have run with you today the way the car ran the first two segments? I don't think so. I had him covered, but, you know, that's the thing about it. If we're going to let stuff like that go, we'll see what happens next week. What happened to the left rear tire? When did that get cut? Well, that's when he nearly run me in the wall down there, and then it started rubbing the fender, and that's when it blew out. Now, these kind of things happen in special events. The tempers go away during the week, and you get back to full point racing next weekend. These things don't carry over, do they? Well, I don't know. You know, it, it's time for this to stop. You know, the thing of it is I have been not the aggressive driver all my life. You know, I've tried to give and take with the best of the things. But when a guy cuts you off that bad and that obvious, it's time to, to take the other cheek. You know, the thing of it is you go out and you run as hard as you can all day long, and then him trying to cut you out to outrun it, that ain't the way I was brought up racing. Well, indeed, a difference in philosophy here. Bill Elliott's still upset, and rightfully so. Some contact those last 10 laps, and he's trying to cool off here back behind the truck. Well, he gave, him a, uh, gave Earnhardt a pretty good kiss after the checkered flag over there on near turn number three. I mean, he wrapped him. So here's your final order of finish, and uh, as you look at the order of finish, I'll give you the money. First place, 200,000. Second, 50,000. Third, 40,000. Fourth, 30,000. Fifth is 19,000. And then six through 10 pays 14, 12, 11, 4, 11, 250, and 10, 90. That's not a bad day's work. Not bad at all. But the man with the biggest pile of the loot is that one right there, Dale Earnhardt. Right now, we're going to go back to Indianapolis to finish the story of what's going on relative to the Indy 500 with Jack Aroot. Keith, it seems as if no sooner did the action start to heat up at Charlotte, it did the same thing here at Indianapolis. We've had another attempt. Steve Chassis went out the second time today. Just moments ago, he had his first lap at 197 miles per hour, second lap at over 200, then he dropped back to 199. He has one final attempt to make the field because the yellow flag came out on the final lap. He waved it off. Now, one guy that finished second last year and has struggled all month to try and make the show, and he's finally in it, is Kevin Kogan. And Kevin, you said before we on the air that this could be, despite your problems, the year you'll win this thing. 
Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, it was, I was just uh, making a joke, but I think we have a, a good shot at it because, you know, uh, uh, one equalizing factor is the track conditions, and uh, if it's hot and humid like today, I think you'll see a very exciting race. I'm sure that uh, it's not going to be a runaway like a lot of people think it might be. One of the things that is a little bit different that we've noticed all month is the fact that it has been closer to race conditions all month. No rain, a lot of rubber on the racetrack, a lot of oil. What has your team learned about that, running with full tanks, light tanks, since you qualified? Well, with the Marlboro car, we've been struggling the whole time. We had uh, probably really about uh, half of a day of really full tank running, and uh, it was today, really. And uh, we've got a pretty good idea what our car is going to do in the race and how to cure certain problems. I think that we've uh, just come to realize that the cars are going to change full tanks to empty tanks much more than they used to in the past. And it's just going to be part of the ball game to try to figure out how to cope with it. Well, Keith, Kevin came close last year. He certainly hopes that he can come a little bit closer this time. Let's go back to Charlotte. Well, that's a story from Indy. The story today from Charlotte was a wild finish. Here's another man involved in the bumping and banging, Jeff Bodine with Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, another victim of this 170-mile-per-hour version of kick the can here, Jeffrey. What happened up there on that last 10-lap segment? That was what you get for $200,000. Wasn't that great? You know, I really don't know. Uh, I guess Elliot says uh, Earnhardt ran into me. Uh, Earnhardt says Elliot ran into me. Uh, I know somebody did. I went around in a circle, but it was exciting. Uh, it's a shame because the car was running good. The Levi Garrett Exxon AC Sparkplug car was really performing well. We got a good jump on Bill on, it, on the start of the race, the last 10 laps. Thought we were going to be able to get in front of him, then hold him off, but whew, we got to that corner and everything broke loose. Well, you got a little bit of red paint and some blue paint and some sort of green paint on the side of the car. Is there anybody didn't bump you today? <laughs> hey, that's what you'd get for 200000 It was rough out there, but we expected it, especially the last 10 laps. They were sideways through the grass, sideways into corners, running into everybody and trying to get to the front. Uh, I thought it was great. I want to thank RJR Winston for putting on this race. I think it's a great format. Boy, I hope they come back with it next year because I'm, I'm ready to go already. Anything you'd do differently next year besides wear a thicker helmet? <laughs> uh, maybe learn how to dirt track it up and turn one a little bit better. Uh, if I could have saved it, I could have kept going. But, uh, you know, we didn't hit the wall, and we're thankful for that. we got to race this car next weekend in World 600. It's a good car. It's running really good. We're going to tune it up, bang out these dents, and we'll be back here next week. You may want to stay away from those two guys, Earnhardt and Elliott, next week. I think the... We may, we may see some retaliation, possibly. I was trying to find out who did it. I said, who ran into me? And they said, there was too much smoke. We don't know. I said, well, was it Earnhardt? We don't know. Elliot, I don't know. I said, tell me. I want to get down in this action. They were running into each other, you know. I said, heck, I want to get in there and hit somebody. But they couldn't tell me who did it, so I just had to keep on coming into pits. And Tim can tell me. <laughs> That's Jeff Bodine. All right, Jerry. And here's the final kiss after the checkered flag. Uh, Earnhardt has won it. And uh, you're going to see Bill Elliott come into the picture here in a minute and whack him one. So that sort of spices things up. There it is right there. That sort of spices things up for next week's World 600 here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Donnie Allison, a brief comment on the format from you. Well, I'll tell you what, Keith, it really turned out swell. It, it's just what it meant to be a uh, uh, Saturday night 10 lapper. And uh, <laughs> all the, the only thing lacking was the fisticuffs, and I thought we were going to have a little of them on pit road. But uh, well, the day was, isn't over. <laughs> it was very, very good. All right, we hope you enjoyed it. This ABC Sports exclusive brought to you by the heartbeat of America, today's Chevy trucks, by AC Delco, stay ahead of trouble with AC Delco parts, and by Budweiser. Beachwood age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. ABC Sports coverage of the Winston, produced by Bob Goodrich. Directed by Larry Cam. Our technical director, Terry DeCarlos, Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. Associate producer, Rob Miner. Associate director, Dick Buffington. Promotional consideration paid by Chevrolet Motor Division, General Motors Corporation. The preceding program brought to you by Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions and produced in association with ABC Sports Incorporated. Saturday, ABC's Wide World of Sports features live world championship rematch, the champion Marvin Johnson. The man who beat Leslie Stewart gave him his only loss to take the title. Now Stewart gets a chance to regain it. 
plus a live Indianapolis 500 report, Wide World's Athlete of the Week Award, Saturday, 4.30 Eastern and Pacific, 3.30 Central. Sunday, ABC Sports presents the Indy 500, the single day biggest sporting event in the world. You'll see it live here on ABC. Once again, your winner is Dale Earnhardt.